Let me give you a few examples of how some of these cell celebration churches actually might look. Um, one of the questions that often comes up is, um, will there be a loss of control? If we decentralize a lot of the church ministry into these small groups that are led by lay people, will these groups somehow uh, develop in a negative way? Will they split off? Will they have bad teaching? Um, will the leaders of these groups become difficult? And certainly happen. However, it doesn't need to happen. In fact, uh, one of the keys, as I mentioned before, one of the keys to making the cell church model work well is the training and supervision of the cell group leaders. I recommend at least monthly a meeting with those cell group leaders. Churches that say, well, we'll meet once or twice a year, you're not in close enough contact with those cell group leaders. And so you need to have a monthly training or a monthly meeting of some kind where you're in regular contact. And then the people who are supervising those cell group leaders, they need to be visiting those groups and seeing what's happening actually in the groups. So there's actually a pretty close supervisory role going on here. Those groups shouldn't be just sort of developing off in their own little way, but if it's being properly supervised, uh, the leadership of the network is aware of what's going on. Also, who is approved to become a, an official cell group leader? Not anybody can just step up and say, I want to lead a cell group. Those cell group leaders would have to go either through a form of training or they'd have to be at least approved by the leadership of the network. And so that's one of the ways that you maintain consistency. Some churches with their cell groups, they will determine what the curriculum is or what the topics to be discussed. Many times the cell groups will discuss the Sunday morning sermon and Questions will be provided for those groups. And so what the topics that are discussed, the way in which those groups are led is very, very much uh, guided uh, by the leadership of the church or the network. And so actually, sometimes in a very uh, strong authority-oriented cultures, for example, in Korea, you have some of the strongest cell group systems. Where you run into trouble is where the system is run in a much too loose manner, actually, and there's not enough supervision, there's not enough equipping of those cell group leaders. So that's going to be one of the keys to doing this effectively. But you can see it is based on a model of empowerment. And so that's why it actually does fit with sort of an apostolic type of approach. Because what you're doing is you're empowering the local lay people to do frontline ministry. Those cell group leaders, they're leading teaching or they're giving spiritual care to the people in their group. Um, and so you're really, it is a form of empowerment. Now one somewhat unique example, I've never seen anything quite like it elsewhere in the world, is uh, the example of Zenos Christian Fellowship in Columbus, Ohio, that's in the United States. This was, is really a network of house churches, but very, very tightly knit, very, very well structured and supervised. It started out actually in the 1970s as a, sort of a student movement where students were coming to faith in Christ and forming home groups, and then it developed over the years. And so what they have is a network of roughly 150 home churches. And each of these churches might have 50 to 60 people who attend those home churches. But they have also what they call central teachings. And that is central meetings, and they have buildings, large buildings, where they will bring together then their leadership, and they will have teaching times. And so they have teaching pastors who are very well trained, and they give this centralized teaching to the cell group leaders and others who are in the church. And so this is one way of ensuring that there's strong and consistent teaching in the movement. Sometimes if you only have house churches without this kind of teaching, then uh, those house church leaders, they're probably not very well theologically trained. And so the danger of them getting into false teaching or just inappropriate sort of leadership 
is great. So by having these central teachings, you're making sure that good, solid biblical teaching is being uh, permeated throughout the home groups. And so these central teachings actually happen on three different locations in the city. They also have a very extensive adult education program. Uh, this picture here shows one of their, their central locations. And they have programs all the way for, from, for new believers to help disciple new believers through those who want to become home group leaders. And they actually, in partnership with Trinity where I teach, they actually have an extension master's program in Christian ministry that they offer to people on their staff. Other people from other churches can actually participate in that program also. And so they have a very strong church-based ministerial training program where they're actually partnering with one of the best seminaries in the world to provide excellent uh, training for their top-level leaders. And so it's a very, very well-developed program so that these home churches are integrated into this system. They also operate Christian schools. They have three different Christian schools. They have various children and youth and student, uh, urban mission program, global mission ministries. And so by networking together, even though they don't have what would be the big celebration worship service, so they're what we'd call a radical house church, uh, cell church movement with no central celebration, they still cooperate as a network to provide these kind of specialized ministries so it's for youth. Um, in a home group, there might only be one other teenager, say, in that group. And teenagers like to have other peers and need other Christian peers, so they'll have then a youth ministry, a youth group that, that meets, that's collective with these different groups. And so by networking together, they really have the best of, of both worlds. They, they have good solid teaching and equipping. They have good supervision. They have some specialized ministries. But again, the focus is primarily in the home churches. And so they've been, they have grown to an attendance of around 4,500 people that attend all these different home groups. And they're reaching people for Christ. They're very evangelistically oriented. Um, and so it's a somewhat unique uh, a group, but um, pretty exciting the way they're, they're uh, doing ministry. I've not seen this repeated in this form really uh, anywhere else. There are some other cell celebration type churches that have some parallels, but this was quite a unique example. And, and the reason I share this is just to sort of expand your thinking about the way that church ministry can be done. It doesn't always have to be the way your home church always did it. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com. Sometimes people say, well, is it really church multiplication if you're multiplying cells but not the celebrations? In other words, your cel big celebration meeting where all the, the Christians in the cell groups come together for worship and instruction, maybe you don't create plant new uh, celebrations, but you keep reproducing cells. And my answer to that is, yes, if those cells are really fulfilling biblical function of the church. Remember, the Bible doesn't define church as having a building or having a paid pastor and those things. Are they meeting together for, for apostolic teaching, for prayer, for fellowship, for breaking bread, for evangelism, for service? Are they fulfilling the functions of a church at the small level? Are they truly multiplying? In other words, are those cell groups growing and then creating new cell groups? And uh, so that would be a question. But eventually even celebrations do need to reproduce. Because of geography, you may be reaching people at a distance that it's very hard for them to come to a central celebration. And because of space limitations, it may be that you just don't have a building large enough for the people. And it may be because of differing cultures and needs of people. 
we know that there may be a certain sort of demographic, a type of person that lives in the inner city, a certain income or education level. And there may be people who live on different neighborhoods that have very different kinds of needs. Maybe they're poor, they're less educated. Um, they have different kinds of social needs. And so you may need a different kind of celebration that can relate to uh, where they're at and minister more effective to their particular needs. One more example would be Tokyo Horizon Chapel in Japan. Now, Japan is famous for being one of the more difficult mission fields in the world where there are very, very few Christians and evangelism is very, very difficult. But um, when I visited Japan a few years ago, I met with a couple of the leaders in this church and it was fascinating to hear uh, the way this church in Japan, in Tokyo, has developed. They have planted in uh, between 1991 and 2007, uh, when I was there, 16 daughter churches. And this is in Japan, which is a difficult place to work. Now the size of those daughter churches may range from 10 people to 150 people. So some of them just may be very small, meeting in a home, like a house church, but they're receiving leadership from the central church. Uh, they may even be getting uh, sermons on video that they're watching in their little home church because they don't have somebody in that little group that would be able to preach or teach. But then some of these others have become more independent. They're larger. They've got fuller ministry. Interestingly, this movement does not have a formal membership. They have a clear leadership, but there's no formal membership. People come or go. Some are house churches. Some have buildings. Some are more localized in a smaller community or suburb. Others are in cities. Maybe there's some, a family or two who was attending the main church and they moved to another town or city and they said, we want to start something like this. They're empowered to do that. And they may start meeting in a home, see how it grows. And then that pastor will meet with the leaders. So most of these churches are planted actually by lay people who've relocated. They've not paid necessarily church planners to go start these. They've had lay people with vision, who they send out, who they bless, and then who they empower and train to be able to give leadership. Now some of them, as they grow, do have paid pastors, but some don't. They use video sermons. And it began to operate its own Bible school to begin to train pastors for the movement. They found out in their experience that those people who had been trained in more traditional seminaries were really not geared for this kind of ministry. Some of these pastors that went out to help plant these churches, they had to be tent makers. They had to get ordinary jobs and support themselves for a time. They were committed to the cause, and that makes all the world. They were just not paid uh, pastors to go and get a job. They were committed to the planning of these churches. And they found out that, um, that most traditionally trained the seminary graduates were just not, not geared for that kind of ministry. So they started their own internal Bible school in the, the framework of the church to train up the leaders for this movement. So I find this also another fascinating model and maybe some of the churches who are even using these video courses are developing their own internal training systems of raising up their own local leaders uh, without having to necessarily send them away. So those are just a couple of examples of uh, cell celebration or even sort of a hybrid where they're using a number of different models in Tokyo Horizon. 